Okay, for uh, I have uh, I have been writing as I told you because uh, my English is no good, so I I have. Well, my name is Javier Parra. Uh, I'm from uh, Sevilla, a beautiful city in South Spain, and I breed with the Los Tarantos affix from since 1993. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I I have here uh, the more or less the guion the, that you sent to me uh, about what be, is the breed you you breed and why did you choose it. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I'm involved in the recovery of the Spanish dogo for multiple reasons, but in summary, for the need to do justice to our, our autochthonous sinologic heritage and for the extraordinary um, qualities of this type of dog. Uh, to understand the presence of the dogo, uh, we should make a brief historical tour of our peninsula, of our peninsula great dogs. We all know that they had a great influence of the develop of the most of the Molossian of the world. Uh, and if we trace the history and the DNA of breeds like English, Masti, Bulldogs, Dogo de Burdeos, etc., it would be easy to see how they all share a common tribe and verify with historical testimonies the influence that our prey dogs had of all of them. Therefore, on the other modern breeds, the descendants of them, like Dog Argentino, Boxer, American Pitbull, Bull Mastiff, American Bulldog, Cimarron Uruguayo, Fila Brasileiros, etc. In any case, our Spanish Bulldog could not be left out of the international sinology. Uh, they were one of the stronger and best documented pillars of that common trunk. So, uh, to understand how the last specimens of Dogo survived, survived to these days, we had to return to the, to the Alano. I started breeding Alano at the beginning of the 19s with the Tarantos affix. A couple of decades later, when the recovery of the Alano was successfully completed, we decided to support the recovery of the Spanish Dogo. Uh, we must remember that the nucleus of population discovery in the Encartaciones and the service as base for the recovery of the Spanish Alano was confused in its majority by dogs they're called presa or dogos, presa or chatos, uh, and of more robust constitution and shorter bodies than the traditional Alano for hunt, were stronger than the, than the ala typical Alanos for runner. You know? yeah. So the recovery of the different types, uh, the recovery of the different types of prey dogs could have been possible in that period. In, on the one hand, the type lighter with a runner structure mentioned about the Spanish Alano, and in the other hand, the most stronger type uh, presa or dog. Uh, there was enough population uh, and historical records to, to be able to do it. However, it was decided to merge all this in a single project, the Spanish Alano, as a generic concept and more oriented to the synergetic version, hunting version, lighter structure for long distance. Fortunately, as a result of a genetic strength and livestock origin of the project, uh, years later still appear dogs in the Dogo Trans. The blue the blue strain of the old Molossian of prey, although in the regressive phases, was still latent among our Alanos. In this situation, we have two options. Let them to be gradually diluted as the Spanish Alano was homogenized, homogenized, or save them for extinction. Obviously, we bat to save them. In 1944, the National Club of Breeders of Dogo Español was founded. However, for several years before this club was founded and the project was made public, there was a breeder, a Spanish Alano breeder in particular, especially committed to safeguarding, to safeguarding this typology. And not just talking about it, 
as we have all done until then, but working for this. This breeder, who is currently the president and founder of the Dogos Club, is my friend and great genealogic, Francisco Rincón, Los Tercios Affix, and he focus, focus his effort on the selection towards that goal, contributing to that the Dogo sit germinating more strongly than ever among the last lives to Taipalanos. I don't know if you understand my English. <laughs> I'm yeah, yeah. trying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, some, some specimens of this trend had also been born in my house, as in many of Alanos Breeder a few years ago, uh, so that when I knew Francisco Purpose, I had no doubt in supporting his initiative and joined the project. I am currently part of the club's board of directors and member of the of his breeding camp meeting. One year after the, the founding of the club, we present the breed and the project in the first symposium about autochthonous dogs breeds within the within the framework of the International Dog Show of Murcia, organized by the Real Sociedad Central Canina de España. Francisco Rincón and I were the speaker in this Congress, and from that moment, greet exponentially uh, the interest and support to the project of, of a great part of the national and international xenophilia. Uh, that same year, the breed is recognized by Alliance Canada Worldwide. Uh, regardless of the controversy by historical and etymological circumstance, where there is no doubt is that our grape dogs in Peninsula Spain could be classified in two groups perfectly differentiated. In the one hand, the lightest dog with the runner structure, Spanish Alano and Villano de las Encartaciones, oriented mainly to big games and livestock management, and in the other hand, the most robust Spanish bulldog or presa, more use on guarding firms and ranches, and the handling of heavy livestock in short distance. Mm -hmm. There also, uh, there are also uh, all cues that define the Alano as a crusaded between the Dogo and the Lebral. The cruising between Moloso and lighter dogs was always very common through history. It is enough to review the origin of breeds such as the American Pit Bull Terrier, Bulldogs by Terriers, Presa Canario, Moloches by Majorero, Fila Brasileiro, Dogos by Hounds, Dog Argentino, Prey Dogs by Hunting Dogs, Villano de las Encartaciones, Prey Dogs by Shipper Dogs, etc. Within our most robust grip dogs, we also find different, different tendencies historically justified. On the one hand, there was hypertypic individuals of the bulldog type, too short muscle, shorter structure, and medium or long height. And on the other hand, we, uh, there was other biggers with more harmonious proportion in general, this trend of greater scoop and functional versatility is what most influence in the form Dogo de Burdeos, English Mastiff of the mid and late 19th century. Those of us who form this pro Dogo collective, we bet on the most rustic and functional version of a molosov of work able to move the kilos with solvency and with projection of future. Mm -hmm. We want to avoid ex extreme tendency and hypertypicity. We don't, we don't know want another invalid to our xenophilia. We, we, we want a working doc, no a caricature. Mm -hmm. I don't mind English. Yep, get it, um, perfect. Okay, you, uh, you, you asked to me about the, when I develop my, my passion for dogs. I can, I can say that I learned I learn before to draw dogs than write. 
when when I was <laughs> a, a baby, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, since I have memory, the animals in general and the dog world in particular form an inseparable part of my biography. I could not concise my life without this hobby. Now this part of my life completely. So uh, I always had do uh, had dogs, but it was when I was 19 years old when 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 with my first salary uh, I bought my first pedigree dog. A boxer of impressive appearance, very spectacular, uh, and temperament, very good temperament, but with some respiratory deficiency, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately. With this dog, I learned an important lesson. Functionality and hypersensitivity mm -hmm. are incompatible parameters under my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and... And I, as I was always uh, uh, had a special interest in the in the working dogs, thanks to this disappointment, I researched it, looking for the healthiest and more functional ancestors of the dogs whose personality kept tied to me. Mm -hmm. And in this way, a few years later of that bad experience with the, with my first boxer, I got our native prey dogs. I knew the native prey dogs, studying and. Since then, more than 20 years ago, I am still in love with this, with his virtues of the or autochthonous predators, the ancestors of the boxer, mastiff, and so on. Uh, about my mentors, uh, like you asked to me before, uh, my mentors, teachers, and inspiration have been many, but as I cannot mention all, all of them, <laughs> could be very long mm -hmm. this interview. Um, I will point out the breeders of my my first Alano pair, couple of, of, of Alanos, and from who I learned a lot. Mr. Manolo Manuel Jaren Nebot, Los Cuadrejones Afix, an author of the books Alano Español, and Pedro Luis Martinez, Condado de Niebles Afix, rancher, an example of how functionality and morphology can go hand to hand. Mm -hmm. About the history of the Spanish bulldogs, uh, under my under my opinion, we could we could talk of its oldest history, and also its most recent history from the 19th, because. Everybody now about all history, uh, but people is more curious about the recent process, mm -hmm. the contemporary process of recovering. When the team, uh, in this fact, when the team that was looking for the last descendant of Alanos discovered the encartaciones, in the encartaciones, the legitimates, the legitimate hearts of our presa and Alanos, Thanks to this, to this discovery population, Alano Sandogo could be recovered. Regarding, regarding its oldest history, at the end of the, of the fourth century, if we go back, uh, at the end of the fourth, 14th century, the Alano, the Alano occupied the largest areas of Sudan, Sudan Europe, including the Iberian Peninsula. The Alan tribus were accompanied by the dogs of prey, that were mixed, mixed with the dogs brought to the peninsula by Phoenicians and Romans. This mixture gave rise to what later would be called Presa or Dog. Mm -hmm. uh, its name is mainly due to its quality in the management and control of the Miguel cattle from the Iberian Peninsula. Later, the appearance of the bullfighting offered them a prominent role in the so-called Suerte de Perros al Toro, bullfighting between bulls and dogs, until the beginning of the 20th century. That was for reading. Mm -hmm. Like in England, like in many places. Mm -hmm. uh, due, to its, due to its quality for defense, the dog was used as a war dog by the military of other nations 
particularly for the control of insurgents in the Americas, mm -hmm. where they have a very protagonistic role there. Mm -hmm. uh, he was dog was like the like the police like the police dog, mm -hmm. more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, Uh, about the purpose and functions of, of this breed, the dog is a strong working dog. Must be continue being a strong working dog, rustic and functional. A stand out in the defense of the territory and family. Mm -hmm. They have a very safe and balanced character thanks to which it is showed as a breed of a great nobility with the family, mm -hmm. because very sure himself. Uh, as functional molosu, uh, must have enough psychical solvency, physical solvency to move, to move your kilos, your kilograms, without denoting heaviness or fatigue. You know, mm -hmm. uh, very suitable, very suitable for the management of cattle of power, especially cattle and shrine in semi-free farms, and also as protection dogs. About the the jobs that dogs have today, uh, guard and defense of people, livestock and goods, as well as handling of strong animals in livestock farms, especially cattle and Cattle and pigs. Mm -hmm. About the, the breed the standard, uh, this time the standard de defines a prototype as an objective toward which to direct the selection in search of its own differential niche. We must to find a place between. Spanish Alano, Presa Canario, the American, uh, we are looking at a specific differential niche that mm -hmm. we, we have it, but we must consolidate, you know. In this sense, important step has been taken. As is logical, given the phases in which we, we, in which the project is located, not all the specimens born today are adapted to the desirable differential parameters. However, the commitment of the breeders involved uh, allow us to be very optimist, and the population continue growing numerically and qualitatively toward the desirable uh, desired objectives. Uh, about the, um, my experience in the in the shows, uh, for me it has never been a priority to get titles. And now, but I understand that it helps to the international diffusion of the project and to the prestige of of a breeder. And all that is like a synergy that helped uh, to the project. No? Years ago, I had a very active stage on the in the diffusion of the Spanish Alano uh, when I was a Spanish Alano breeder. Uh, as well as in its re reintroduction into traditional work media. Mm -hmm. For me, it was very important uh, that hunter, uh, cattle men, now the, the Spanish Alano. Many, many people years ago didn't know the Alano. Eh? It was a very big effort to diffusion, writing articles, showing, and so on, documentals, TV, mm -hmm. and and it was consolidated. Okay, um, uh, okay. I breed, I breed uh, some of the most emblematic and influential specimen of this breed, mm -hmm. the Alanos, in the 90s, at the, at the beginning of the century, mm -hmm. both functionally and morphologically. However, with the Dogo, we are getting more involved from doors to inside and in show, in the in show doors, mm -hmm. uh, we have participated in some in some congress and worked together with the president of the club, uh, uh, writing a book that ta can take years to see the light due to the large amount of documentation and reference that we are still receiving and processing. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. We are in the process of uh, writing a book, but will be very long. We mm -hmm. are receiving even today, even today, okay. when we thought that we know everything about the about mm -hmm. the Alano, right. about the Greek group, we continue receiving information, new information, you know, because there are many people involved in a study, investigation, and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so all that contents will be writing our future books. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, as for for the presence of my dogs uh, in in the show, dogs, uh, I have been fortunate to have the support of enthusiast friends, uh, Sasha, Daniel, and Annette from Norway, uh, who have taken taking care of covering this facet of divulgation, succeeding in converting one of my dogs born, born at home, Arturo de los Tarantos, mm -hmm. in the most awarded dog of today, with the titles of Champion of Spain, Norway, Europe, and Eurasia Champion. Mm -hmm. I've been uh, thanks to, to friends that is covering that facet, face, that, that uh, question. Uh, About the special, about the special training, basic obedience when when dealing with dogs of this size is necessary. Uh, consider that the, a typical dog is around 15 kilograms, even more. No? It's important to have the control, uh, not because danger, at least because it's strong. No, that's so, all. Uh, the outdoor sport with them strengthens important links. The predisposition to work is innate in them and emerges easily, especially when they capture um, what you want or expect from them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we hope to, to join a working group to start with a couple of dogs in defense and protection. Um, about uh, mm, uh, the, the, the resistance, the, mm, you asked to me about handle cold, hot weather, uh, uh, about resistance of the condition, uh, mm -hmm. the adaptability of the condition. Like a, like animals uh, or dogs resist cold better than hot. Mm -hmm. However, however, the environment that of hard work in which the last specimen of these dogs survived, as well as the climate of our country, they have made these dogs have a great touristicity and resistant to hostile living conditions. Mm -hmm. Now it's very, very resistant, more than almost Moloso classic of today. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very rusty, very rusty, very rusty dog. Mm -hmm. uh, About the best situation or condition for, for the breed, the, the, ideal, the ideal environment for them is where they can spend time outdoor, explore farms, villas, with lands, mm -hmm. a space of land. Also, it's true that uh, given their size and adaptability, they do not require the same level of activity as, uh, as other smaller breeds. Uh, this facilitates adaptation to smaller cities, sites, uh, provided they can enjoy out, out where they can bend energy and list at least a couple of times a day, a day or more. Okay. Uh, about, uh, you asked to me about the condition of uh, if if they can live in in apartment or house with a small place, I, I think perfectly, provided they are allowed to go out two or three times a day for a will that allows them to bend the energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not so important the place than the time you employ with them, the training, go out and so you mm -hmm. know because. Normally, they are calm. Mm -hmm. They can be sleeping every day, you know, until they need to work. When mm -hmm. they need to work, they change completely and put in active mm -hmm. predisposition, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So um, about the, the the life with other animal with other animals, uh, yes, uh, as long as they have been raised from an early age with them or well educated to maintain the balance of the pack, is no problem. They are well balanced. They understand perfectly what you want of them, and they do what you want. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you punish any uh, in trade of of finance, or you are uh, you have a good control of them, there is no problem. They mm -hmm. are good, uh, easy dog, easy dog to take to have. You know, mm -hmm. uh, in this sense, the spearing of the owner as an alpha uh, with leadership and a minimum knowledge of animal behavior help a lot. Mm -hmm. no? Uh, you asked a controversial question about uh, <laughs> if you were to cross any uh, one of the, of your dogs, what other breed would you use? Well, uh, if it were strictly necessary to make an outcrossing, I would look for a healthy and functional individual from a lineage contrasted, genetically related, and morphologically, morphologically close to the standard and objectives we have. In the same way that from the officiality in the rest of, of the breeds, there is the resource of the initial registration, registration, the initial registration that allows the incorporation in the book of origin of dogs of a now genealogy but morphologically typical. Mm -hmm. We consider, from the club, we consider uh, the possibility of this tool, but always with the necessary restrictions and controls in order to safeguard a majority of contracted genetic weight. Mm -hmm. we, we think that we must conserve the old genetic of our ancestors, the Spanish, the last Spanish Alan mm -hmm. You know, so the, the genetic must be continuing that. Wait, no, this is not a band dog. This is not a, mm -hmm. of course, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, about uh, other breeds uh, that I have, uh, in which I have experience. I have experience in breeds like Spanish Alanov, of course, many years. Presa Canario, Boxer, Bull Terrier. Not only because... Uh, not necessary for breeding, but for training them. Okay, mm -hmm. so I am uh, a, a great experience in the in the handling of that type of dogs. American bulldog. I, I, I breed some some litter of American bulldog year, years ago. Uh, Mastin Espanol, etc. Eh? About my favorite breeds, uh, well, there are several. Uh, I love any working breed whose specimen stand out in the performance of their duties. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I have to mention just a few, this would, of course, be the Spanish Alano, the Villano de las Encartaciones, Cadebo, and Presa Canario. Looking, in, looking inside Spain, you know, because mm -hmm. Spain has been very, we are right la uh, very late to the modern concept of, of breeds and, and we must defend our, our product, you know. Uh, but, the, but when I told about the Presa Canario, I, I am referring the the old type of first standard in the 90, mm -hmm. in the in the 18, in the 18s. Mm -hmm. uh, the Presa Canario, the old Presa Canario was a very very rustic dog with enough with enough imprint of the majorero. Less heavy than the current specimens, with shorter and rectilinear top line, with a lot of trust from the from the rear train. Mm -hmm. I love those dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, they were much closer to our peninsular presa than what we can see today in the shows. Right. I remember my first article when I read the first article in the 18th uh, about uh, presa canario was really, really, really great. They shorter. Uh, rectiline uh, top line the, the weight was around 15 kilograms mm -hmm. uh, and today is competitive it's, it's very different mm -hmm. I don't critics the evolution they they have uh, had but uh, 
eh, I like more the old time uh -huh. Presa Canaria. Uh -huh. eh, about my, <coughs> my routine, about my routine with, with dogs. Uh, well, I, I like every dogs lovers. <laughs> I, I share my free time between family and dogs. Uh, trying to involve the family in many of the activity with dogs. Mm -hmm. And now walks to the park, the field, games, training, and meeting with other enthusiast friends. Mm -hmm. This is our close, you know. Sometimes I, I, I miss to go to the theater, to go to the cinema. Yeah. <laughs> but it's every, every time, every time with dogs. It's, it's crazy. It's mm -hmm. crazy. But uh, probably you will understand to me. Yes. Absolutely. Well, about the, the, <laughs> mm -hmm. About my, my kennels, uh, well, I must to to explain that uh, until a couple of years ago, uh, <clears throat> I live in the countryside where I had a large and comfortable facilities for my dogs, but it was a cycle a cycle that ends. Mm -hmm. uh, now I I have few dogs uh, and we enjoy our our animals from a different perspective. I live in a house in the outskirts of the city with a lot of countryside around, but it's a house, it's mm -hmm. not a farm, you know? Mm -hmm. So I am uh, unlimited. Mm -hmm. I am enjoying my dog from another perspective. Um, enough enough to accommodate a trio of bulldogs uh, and planning a litter from time to time, but not like, like before. Uh, my commitment to the breed is more moral, moral than physical support. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what we uh, what what we have lost in prolificity in breeding, we have gained in a closer bond with our animals, mm -hmm. who are now more part of the family than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you have many dogs, of course, it's impossible to have the same close relation mm -hmm. with the, all, all your dogs. So I am enjoying from another perspective with less dogs now. Mm -hmm. The more cool. And some, some words I would like to share uh, before say before say goodbye <laughs> uh, is that I wanted to take advantage of this space, to thank you, thank you for the work you are doing and for the opportunity you give to our project to make it now. Mm -hmm. uh, I say goodbye, not, nothing that many of our breeds and ethnic groups, ethnic groups, uh, survive it for decades, regardless of the officiality, thanks to its functionality working from the anonymity in the most rural and deep Spain. Mm -hmm. Will, on the other hand, perhaps for snobbery or countryside, supervalued everything that came from outside. Things changed. And since few decades ago, there has been a growing awareness to our, our tradition and breeds, fortunately. Mm -hmm. we, arrived, we arrived late, by, but we arrive to state and we reclaim the place that correspond to us by history, by present and by future. Share this interview as my particular tribute and gratitude to those cattlemen of the Encartaciones in whose environment the last descendant of the old Greek dogs were preserved with the sufficient degree of purity and atavims so that today we can speak of Alanos, Villanos, and Dogo as a reality for the world is in Ophelia. Mm -hmm. That would be my, my last word, uh, that this is a, a thought orient uh, that we need to do with, with our patrimony, gene genetic patrimony mm -hmm. here in Spain. Mm -hmm. It is more or less the resume I have tried to explain. I don't know if you would understand to me mm -hmm. because uh, I have the <clears throat> opportunities to practice, to practice my English, but I hope that some of the audience have understand something of uh, what I wanted to share with you. 
Yeah, yes, I think they, they definitely will. And I think it's very important that we're um, embarking on this because, uh, you know, uh, preservation of heritage to me is very important. And part of that heritage, in, in my point of view, is is dogs. Um, and I and I think uh, I really respect the traditions of Spain and, and the dog breeds that come from Spain. And so um, I'm very happy that you decided to do this, uh, even though that, uh, you know, you, you, it was a little nerve wracking, a little for you because uh, of the language, but you did great. And, 